what's going on, everybody? It's Q Jackson, host of BLK Talk. Look, I was over here preparing for another amazing episode, but look, I need you guys to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so that you guys don't miss any of our amazing conversations. Have a new episode coming to you in five, four, three, two. What's going on, everybody? It's Q Jackson, host of BLK Talk, and guess what? I'm back with another amazing episode, another amazing guest, and an amazing conversation. Today's guest is somebody who I have been watching for the last four, soon to be five seasons, um, on Carl Weber's The Family Business. Guys, welcome to BLK Talk, Arrington Foster. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, um, as I was t telling you earlier, um, couple maybe months ago I started I reactivated my Netflix and I actually started watching the family business I didn't get the chance to watch it when it first came out because I just didn't pay for BET plus <laughs> however I'm you know I'm glad that I got the opportunity to watch you guys um your character is like amazing <laughs> like I told you it was so crazy to see you without the colorful hair with the facial hair but I'm so glad you're here today because I would love to learn more about this family business life. I would learn to love more about you as an actor, as a person. So if you can, tell the people a little bit about you. Um, what's up, everybody? I'm Arrington Foster, and I am originally from Maryland. Okay. Shout out to Maryland. Mer 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 you Merlin. Got Merlin. <laughs> you got Merlin it up, you know. Um, Born and raised there, I grew up as a theater kid, always wanting to entertain, whether that was acting, do all the things, and um, I went to college in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated from TCU, go frogs. <laughs> frogs. <laughs> yes, the Horn Frogs, actually, um, in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas area, and um, that's where I got my degree in theater, and then um, through that, I realized I really wanted to do film and TV. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the time, you know, it was either you go to New York, you go to L.A. Mm -hmm. So I knew, I was like, okay, L.A. is where I want to go. So I moved out there in 2015. Okay. And um, was just hustling like many actors, you know, taking all the free classes, whether it was student films, short films, web series, you know, doing commercials and those types of things. And then just... Um, being at the right place at the right time, getting to uh, meet Trey Haley, who is the director of the family business. Um, oh. Trey Haley. So he is the oh, director. Oh, okay. I thought you business. said Trey Haney. No, Trey Haley. is an actor. I believe so. Yes. Named Trey. Okay. Yes. yes so. No. Different person. Gotcha. Different Trey. Um, Trey Haley, who's worked with Tridestin Studios and Carl Weber on a few projects. Um, most people may not know that the family business was supposed to be a movie. So mm. it's based on a book. Uh, best-selling book series um, with Urban Books Media. And um, we shot what we thought was the movie in mm -hmm. 2017. Come to find out, um, when 2018 was rolling around and BET got wind of it, mm -hmm. you know, and they were looking for a really good scripted show because, you know, it had been a while since a really good show was on BET. I'm sorry, let's yeah. just keep it 100. <laughs> and so, you know... They said, no, this is too good. We need to make this a television series. And so 2018, we ended up finishing the season and mm -hmm. it aired the day after my birthday, November 13th. My birthday's the 12th. Oh, God. Scorpio. Yes, I am Scorpio. Yes. And they aired it in 2018 and we were on the cable network first, BET. Mm -hmm. And then um, when BET Plus, the streaming platform, became what it is. Uh, we were one of the first shows to be on there um, in season two. And yeah, we are four seasons out now. Netflix came in. Shout outs to Netflix yes. for, you know, broadening our fan base and fandom to the family business family. Um, I believe that was last fall. Um, so it's probably been about, what a good, like seven, eight months that mm -hmm. it's been out on Netflix now. And we have season five coming up in July. Wow. So look out for that um, on BET Plus. So, yeah, we're really excited. And, yeah, I'm just super excited that the fans have, you know, we've, we've weathered through a pandemic, a strike, and y'all are always asking us, when is it coming back? Is it coming back? And so it is coming back. 
I'm excited for everybody to see it. You know what? I am excited too because as I was mentioning to you earlier, I actually just, like when I got off work mm -hmm. yesterday, I came home, I put me a little DiGiorno in the oven and I sat in DiGiorno. front of the TV. You know, it's all right. It's good. <laughs> I sat in front of the TV and I finished the last uh, three episodes. Yeah. And it's I'm a like, good binge. Like it really is and it irritates the hell out of me because <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready for more yeah. and now I have to wait like a month and a half. We have like a whole new fandom that's like, you know, just now discovering the show, mm -hmm. which is it's beautiful, you know. Um, that's just the power of Netflix and yeah. Sometimes it's just the word of mouth. I'll get that all the time. People are like, I've heard of that show but I never watched it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have BT Plus and so... To have more people being like, oh my God, I love the show. It's just, it's heartwarming. For sure. But to realize though that this journey um, for you started, what, seven years ago. You said that's when you guys originally um, take what was supposed yeah, to be the movie. Yeah, almost cr crazy. Yeah. Wow. So how does that feel knowing that you have been a part of something for so long that is still going, that people still want, that I guess BET still wants. Yeah. Um, how does that feel? And you... I would assume have a an actual family that you yeah. guys have created amongst the cast. Absolutely. I mean, let's be honest. Most shows don't even go past one or two seasons nowadays. Yes. Yes. You know, very so true. to be able to have a show, I mean, I think we all kind of felt that that thing when we first did it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in no way did we think that we'd be going on this long. You know. Um, but so it's it's super exciting and and yes I mean we really have become like a real family I mm. mean it's a heavy soap opera drama but yeah. people would probably not even believe that we're a whole bunch of clowns like we joke and laugh all the time off screen off set and I'm just super proud of everybody for everybody for what they're doing and their different endeavors and projects and you know I think. Um, the pandemic kind of brought us together even more mm -hmm. because a lot of, I think what people may not know is that we were quarantined the last few seasons mm -hmm. while filming these seasons, Never you know? Anything. So just think being in a house or, you know, a nice place that they put us all in, mm -hmm. you know, we're literally living together. So it's like, we're constantly being around each other. And I think that energy, that chemistry, it bleeds on the set. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, those are like my second brothers and sisters, my second mom and dad, my TV mom and dad. You know, like it's it's a blessing because um, the great Valerie Pettiford, who plays Chippy, come on, see, um, big she, D. She, that's she, that's yes, what I call. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you guys are familiar um, with, uh, if you know, one you on know. One. If you know, you know. Half and half. Oh yes, half and half. Half and half. half Sorry. And half. Sorry, okay. Valerie. Sorry, Big Dee Dee. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but she even said it in season one. We were doing the pilot, and I was a little nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is going to come out. This is like my first, like, my first TV show. Wow. And she was just like, she was like, just, she was like, you are blessed because, you know, her being in the business for 30 plus years, you mm -hmm. know, not every set is going to be kind. Not every set is going to be nice. Not every cast and crew is going to yeah. be amazing. And our set really is that. Like, just like, you know, you can definitely feel that God is in the midst and we pray and we mm. do everything. Mm. And we just, she's like, just take it all in and enjoy the ride while we have it. So I'm like a sponge. I just, it's coming to set every day is like a blessing. You know, to be an actor, and I'm not an actor. However, in my everyday life, I have to act. I have to act like I like people. I have to act like I want to be bothered. Yeah. But you as an actor... You get to play a character. Mm -hmm. um, and for you, how was it creating or crafting the character of Rio Duncan? Like, you got the yeah. script, mm -hmm. you know, like, how did you become Rio? Um, well, I try to take a lot of myself. I think um, there is a lot of me in Rio, for sure. There's a lot of stuff on the show I would not do mm -hmm. that my character does. But... You know, I try to honor the script, honor, you know, what Carl Weber envisioned for the character and mm -hmm. just try to bring myself into it. Um, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. exciting. You know, just it's kind of like putting on an armor when I have the colored hair, when I have, which is spray, by the way, guys. It's not dyed. I would not have edges still. And whose idea was, was that? Like every episode, you know, this man has different you know, hair. We, we created something really special with that because when we first did the pilot, I remember 
um, Carl and Trey kind of wanting him to stick out from the others, you know, mm -hmm. his brothers and sisters, you know, they're assassins and all this type of stuff. And they wanted something different to be about Rio. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like we all have that Rio in our family, you know, yeah. someone that wants to do something else or do something different. And it was just something that Carl was just like, let's change his hair color or something. And they were like, would you be down for that? And I was like, sure, why not? You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that became just that that's his staple now. Like, and I don't think we had seen that on television, you know, maybe other than like Cisco or Dennis Rodman, but we had never seen that. And mm. so, you know, shout outs to the Glam Squad, which is amazing, and our wardrobe and hair. And we've been able to, you know, thank God I'm able to pull off every look, yeah. every color. And we've done so many over the years and redone colors in the past. And I definitely see some influence in some other shows that are now doing that as well. So, so shout out to you for uh, you know uh, setting the trend and the people. It, you know exactly. So it's fun. You know the outfits um, are so much fun, and we get to just be this boss black excellence prominent family that I think is important for black people to see. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we might be on some drug cartel stuff, <laughs> but yeah. but Mama you know, just see, might bust a cap. she might do what she needs to do. But it's like it's fun to see just a like you said. Um, off camera, but we are kind of like a dynasty meets Sopranos meets like, you know, that type of family. Yeah. And it's really, and, and we're going to ride for each other no matter what. For you. Now, having the opportunity to go on set, you have mm -hmm. Valerie Pettiford, you have Ernie Hudson, you have uh, a Pinky, Legends. Clifton, yes. um, Clifton, Clifton um, uh, and, and what the last season, who came on? Uh, Burnt Burn, Burn Nadette, Nadette. Yes. Thelma from Good Times. Thelma like, from Good Times. I'm sitting up here like you have all, even a uh, uh, Stan. Yes, like Stan. all these amazing people mm -hmm. that are on the show, mm -hmm. um, and are now part of your life, a part of mm -hmm. your story, part of your history. Um, what things have you learned from these people? Oh my God, I've learned so much, just so many gems and and just things that I'll take away for you know claiming a long career, you know, just um, being professional, mm -hmm. um, showing up, um, not being afraid to um, play and, and um, treat everyone on screen and off screen with kindness. You know, you want to be able to be likable in this mm -hmm. industry. You want to be able to be pleasant and um, fun to work with. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just, there's some stuff I won't tell you because I got to keep it to myself. But, you know, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so grateful that I've been able to learn from people that I grew up watching and, and them also creating a space to feel like I am just as important, just as a part of this team. Yeah. There's no like weak link. We all like are in this big machine to make this show happen. Yeah. And, and another thing for the most part, a lot of the people on the cast have um, stayed out of drama. You know, they're not a part of, you know, the, the, yeah. the dramas of the world, which is a good thing now. Yeah. Do you guys have conversations about things like that as well? Because I, I would say, like, in artist development, you mm -hmm. know, they tell you certain things that you should and should not do. Mm -hmm. And most of these actors come from um, come from a day and time where there was no social media. Right. Where they're, you know, the only way you heard about what they had going on is if you read one of the, the tabloids in the mm -hmm. supermarket yeah. or, you know, extra or something like that. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, most of them have managed to be private, to be respected, and to mm -hmm. have decades long, which we're praying for you, yes. decades long Claim careers. Mm -hmm. um, so have you guys like talked about... Stuff I mean, like that. you know, we'll we'll talk and you know, hair makeup chair, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we see what's going on on Instagram and Twitter and the shade room and all those things, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I think like you said, they have come from a different generation, they have so much experience and I just learn from example, just seeing how they carry themselves, yeah. you know, when we're at an event or, you know, a red carpet or something and and so, you know, I I'm always gonna keep my ear to the streets because I yes. want to know what's what's the tea, what's going yeah. on. But I I I feel like even though I may be a younger actor coming up, I still have that old soul where I want to make sure that my professionalism and my craft 
is number one. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be involved in drama or yes, mess, and yes. I don't want that to be following my name at all. So I'm grateful that there's no scandals yes. <laughs> on our show. <laughs> so, Not at all. Yeah. Now, you have Darren Henson, mm -hmm. um, who was a choreographer, um, actor. Um, you have Tammy Roman. Yeah. Like, these are your brothers and sisters on the show. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> like, like, what the hell? Like, in real life, mm -hmm. um, do you guys have conversations like... Oh, yeah, we text. Um, I've called them. You know, I think that's one of the cool perks is that I'm able to be like, you know what? I'm stuck on this thing or I need some advice. Mm -hmm. And I could just hit up one of my castmates and be like, hey, you know, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And they're always been receptive they've always been receptive of whatever i've had to say and and it's yeah it's wild it's wild because i'll be on set sometimes i'm like man i'm really working with this person yeah. but then i just realized they're just human beings just like myself and you know they had a story they had a journey and i'm, I'm on mine and speaking of which before there was a rio mm -hmm. there was an errington no merit Mer from merlin pg county um, <laughs> hold on <I> <laughs> pretty girl county <laughs> Did I hear about that on, on Potomac? What? Do, do they live in, like, PG County? Okay, so, live? no, and that's the thing. Potomac is not even in the DMV. Potomac is, like, far, like, on another side of Maryland. But, you know, there's different counties. We have different counties. But the PG, I, I'm going to be honest. PG County, we're a very popular county. So mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people from the DMV, when you say PG County, you know Prince George's County. Because we were a richest black county. Oh. You know, oh. Yeah. yeah very okay. prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you ever go back and, you know, see your people, see where you're from? Um, I, I haven't been back um, in a while. I, I used to go back. Um, most of my family has all left Maryland. Mm, um, okay. My parents retired. It's too they, cold. It's too cold. And D.C. is getting expensive, too. D.C. is getting up there just like Atlanta and L.A. and New York. So I don't blame people for it. Um, you know, Maryland is what raised me. Mm -hmm. You know, I love crab legs. I love, you know, so the it's, go -go it's the music blue crab. The blue crab. Not not the crab that we have yeah. down here. Not so the blue crab. Legs. You know, no, no, no. I mean, we had it all. You know, my, my family had newspapers on the dining room tables and I was cracking crabs when I was three. So oh, now, so okay. Now, this is what I've always wanted to know. And I became familiar with this. I was um, hanging out with Trina Braxton. Okay. And, yeah. you know, they, they from mm -hmm. out there. And, yeah. you know, she was yeah. having a crab boil at the house. And she pulled out the, the ketchup. And I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> ketchup. I'm used to butter, a little, you know, little little sauce. But like, I, that, the that might be a Braxton thing. I don't know. I don't put ketchup on my crab. No, I think they mixed it with like mayonnaise or something. Okay, now I have done that. But maybe for French fries, not for crabs. No, no, they were dipping crab in. No, I'm yes. just giving my butter, you know. Okay, and, see, and I, I thought that was I'm like cool. a Baltimore thing. Well, you know, or, I mean, I'm sorry, a Maryland. Right, because everybody loves me. Oh, you're from Maryland, you're from Baltimore. Baltimore, you know. But, you know, there are people from Baltimore, and then there are people from D.C., and yeah. then there's people that, I was a suburbs kid, so I was kind of like in the middle, so I mm -hmm. could kind of get to either or. But... I had a great childhood. I had two loving parents. Still married, black love. Shout, almost 37 years. Shout out to the parents that are still together. Your yes, parents were together 37 years? In August, and 37 years. Mine's have been together, I think, 41. Yeah. And, and that's very rare. It's and very it, rare. It's a shame. It, yeah, but shout out to black love. We love that. We love to see it. I got my Black Don't Crack shirt on. It was not planned. But so, you know... Yeah. Like a lot of people, like we're talking about, like black love, and mm -hmm. you know, coming from a time where people stuck together despite whatever. But yeah. it's like nowadays, the first sign of trouble, I'm out the door. Well, because apps and Instagram, and social media has made everybody accessible. You yeah. know, nobody wants to deal with things anymore. When things get too tough, they want to just up and bounce to the next. So, yeah, it's a little disheartening. But you know, it is. I still believe in love. You know? I yeah, I do I too. Know. But I also want to be friends with those people because a lot of people that I'm seeing from back in the day, like my mom and dad are best friends. And that's something that I just I love about their love is that good. like they just and that your partner should be your best mm, friend. Like, yeah. If you're my soulmate, mm -hmm. I should be able to tell you anything. Yep. So I don't you should get be when my people safe are, space. Yeah. I don't get when people are like, oh, yeah, I'm with someone. But like. We not like friends like that. Like, how does that even friendship should be the foundation, the yeah. base. Yeah. 
So, you know, but that was a different time, and but I still believe in it. And so, you know, I'm like single, this, but, you know, we... Like they said, what's old is new again. And hey, mm -hmm. hey, to everybody that's out there listening, okay, before you guys embark on a relationship, okay, I need you guys to be friends with the person that you're with. Okay, make that the goal, okay, for all of us. So I'm, I'm talking to whoever my future boo is out there. So if you're listening, I'm ready to be friends, okay? <laughs> Let's start there. Okay, yeah. and back to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, growing up in, in Maryland, mm -hmm. um, you said throughout, like, your school career, you were mm -hmm. singing, you were acting. Mm -hmm. So you sing. You know, he, he does a little thing. He's, he's multi-talented. I mean, he's jack of all trades. Th does he want to, like, add that to the resume, like, officially? Like, do you want to be performing? Do you want to Well, listen, I've music? always still wanted to be on Broadway at some point, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And then, you better call Candy. She right down the street. She listen, putting plays on. And I, and I met her, sis. I saw your blaze. Candy. I'll be back there, too. Candy. Um, you know, I, I love entertainment in all form and fashion so like you know i always say if they ever wanted to bring back glee or empire just something mm -hmm. where i can use all my talents on a television format yeah or a movie format i'm all about it you know Tyler like Barry, Tyler Barry. i mean hey tp you can, you TP, can sing what's up what's up but yeah no i i grew up you know actually in like doing like choir and stuff like that i'm a preacher's kid so just so y'all know, my mother was in the ministry. She still is. Um, but so starting out in like choir and then my music teacher was like, hey, you know, you should do this play. I think I was like 11 years old. And then um, I kind of got bit by the acting bug. Mm -hmm. And that was just like where I fit in. I was a nerdy little theater kid. So it does get better for those. <laughs> I'm just saying it does. And so, you know, that's where I fit in. You know, I did shows like The Wiz and, you know, Annie and, and then you know, going to college and doing more musicals and just honing in the craft. Because, yeah, I grew up around all black schools, all mm -hmm. black neighborhoods. I went to a predominantly white school. And I remember at the time, TCU, I think there was only maybe like three or four black kids in the theater department. So coming in freshman wow. year, I thought I was, I don't know if we can cuss, I thought I was like big stuff. The sh Yeah, I yeah. thought I was until I saw these people and I said, oh my God. So it humbled you. It humbled me very quick. I got rejected so much in college, um, but look where I'm at now. Mm. So yeah, season five, never give coming up. Coming soon. So never give up because I really had to. I think that's what that college experience gave me that tough skin to handle rejection and to just want to grind even harder. And it's not. I think you know whether you're in high school or college, you think that this is like the end all be all. Mm. And you're like you have so much life after that. And so it's, you know, I even had professors that was like, it doesn't matter what you do here. It matters what you do out there mm. and what you learn from here in this moment. Mm. And so I'm grateful for all those professors. I'm grateful for all the, even the ones that turned me down, you know, because yeah. look at me now. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I always knew entertaining is what I wanted to do. I was never like a nine to five cubicle kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had so many part time jobs, side jobs to you know, just so I could do my acting on the mm -hmm. side or whatever. And so, yeah, you know, you you, you got to believe in yourself. You can't ever give up, even when it gets hard and it gets rough, and it will, you know. But if you feel like this is what God called you to do or you have a passion for it, then anybody can do it. Now, speaking of, like, what you just mentioned, there are a lot of people out here, especially in Atlanta, mm -hmm. who have dreams of being the biggest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and they're focused so much on that that they don't pay attention to the now. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are, I guess, afraid to admit or say that they have those like jobs and things like that on the side. Like I know for a minute, like I'm like, oh, I do media, I do this, I do that. But I didn't want to say like every day I'm waking up, I'm going to work. Like how important is it for people to be realistic um, with their goals and dreams and where they are currently in their journey while they're getting to that next place. Yeah, you, you can't let your pride get in the way. Mm, you have to it. be... It's pride. And, and I had to learn that. I had to really learn that because at the end of the day, bills ain't gonna pay themselves. Mm. You have to do what you gotta do. Um, I'm not ashamed about it. Um, I've worked side jobs 
through filming family business, you know, I think especially with, with the strike happening that just happened oh recently, my God, I was... think it broke the ceiling, you know, even people like Taraji P. Henson, just letting people that are non-actors mm -hmm. know that not everybody on TV is rich. Yeah. They not. Yeah. And we not all making top dollar. We're not the top billing making millions. We're not. And that's the misconception. And so, you know, I always say, especially if you're trying to, you know, you're thinking about moving to the big city or whatever, you know, you got to support yourself first mm. and foremost, you know, and so whether that's waiting tables, whether that's retail, whether mm. that's, you know, I've done it all. So I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, I feel like having something flexible so that you can do mm. your passions is very important. But, you know, you can't, I mean, no one wants to be a starving artist. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's hard enough as it is. Yeah. And that takes away from your art when you are so stressed about money mm. and all those other types of things. And so, really, Sorry. I mean, I'll give y'all an example. And I don't think I've ever said this. But after season two of Family Business, you know, I got a little new money. You mm. know, it was, you know, it was new money for me. Yeah. You know, I was a very humble kid, you know, humble beginnings, didn't come from a rich family. Um, but so, of course, I was wilding out, balling, taking trips, you know, doing everything. I mean, we come off a pandemic, so I was ready to be outside. Oh, yeah. I was oh, ready. Yeah. But, you know, things started to dwindle out. You mm. know, money started to not being there. And that's the thing about being an actor, especially I can't, I can't speak for other entertainment, um, whatever you want to call them. But for acting, you know, you're going to have the ebbs and flows, the waves where one minute you might be hot or you might be up. Mm -hmm. The next minute you're down. We've seen it time yeah. and time again, especially even with big time actors. And a lot of times people don't plan for that. If I had gone back to my younger self, I would have definitely taught myself more of the business side mm -hmm. and more of saving yeah. your money yes. because I was not thinking like that. And they don't really teach classes. They, they do. And you should take them. If you find one, take one. Um, about just saving your money, um, but having the realization that I was like, bruh, you got to do something. Mm -hmm. And so going back to my hotel job, I was a valet for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I was a bellman for some years, you know, and just being like, whoa. You know, I think we had that, um, what was the actor that was on the Cosby show that people saw on Trader Joe's? Um, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. The guy who played Jeffrey. No, he, he played Elvin. Elvin. But yeah, I think his name, was... his real name is Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, who played Elvin. And people seeing people and being like, wait a minute, aren't you that guy that's on television? But it's like, yes, I am. And I have to make a living. Mm -hmm. And people are understanding. And first of all, we have to get out of this mindset that we have to care what other people think. Mm. They're not paying mm. for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're not supporting your dreams and so you have to do what you have to do and i had to have that moment where i asked myself and i said listen are you gonna not work because you're scared that if you go to work now people are gonna be like that's him that's the mm -hmm. guy so once i got that out of my head and i was like listen i gotta do what i gotta do and god will bless me to get to that place again mm. then that's what i had to do and knowing that the first of the month that rent is paid in the middle of the month that electric is paid and there's the food car and the and, refrigerator and the Yes. Now, when it comes to <coughs> social media, I know we um, talked about like how um, generations pass. You know, social media was not a thing. Mm -hmm. But you spoke about the strike and how mm -hmm. we learned a lot about a lot of the people. Taraji, mm -hmm. all the money that we thought she was getting, how she broke that down. Much like uh, Left Eye did, you know, mm -hmm. with the, the whole TLC thing. Yeah. You know, we learned mm -hmm. something that we would not have learned. Mm -hmm. um, I even remember, like, Leslie Jones having a conversation on Monique. live. Billy Porter. That's somebody, because of everything that he had going on, we thought mm -hmm. Billy was, you know, living a life. But yeah. when the strike happened, like, this man was forced to have to sell his home. I don't it affected know. A lot. Every, it affected all of us. But because of social media, this is, you know, information we learn. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like in, in this day and age, social media is a productive tool? Um, I think it's a yes and no. I think it's a give and take, a, a catch-22, because on one hand, it is allowing people to have access by their phones yeah. to become something in the industry to get their art out there um, to promote um, but also I think it I don't know I'm old school I, I like seeing people that 
their talent spoke for themselves. Yeah. It wasn't how many followers they had, how many likes they have. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got to be on this platform and this platform to just get seen. You know, we've seen time and time again where now they're trying to cast reality stars on TV shows. Yeah. And a lot of them can't even act. So it's like you got these people that are busting their ass, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears, got Going trained, got degrees, yeah. you know? And so, but at the end of the day, what's for you is for you. Yes. I can't hate on nobody for how they came in the game mm-hmm. or how they got to where they are. Um, I And I firmly believe in taking like social media breaks. You know, we need to have those moments where, because a lot of this new Gen Z, they're not present anymore. They're, they're constantly on their phones all the time. Mm. They're not even talking to people at the table when they're eating dinner. No. You know, it's like, I think I had a valuable lesson where I said, you got to use social media. You can't let social media use you. Absolutely. You probably got that from uh, Lisa Ray. You got the, you, hold up. What did she say? You got to use, you got to get to bump. That's one of my favorite Make movies. that money. Don't Shout let that money Lisa make Ray. you. You, and, it, and it's true. I, I, I love social media for the tool that it is, but I also feel like it can be a, a detriment. Man. You know, I mean, now that was one of the big talks of the strike of AI and technology oh, trying to take over crazy. what artists and storytellers, you can't have robots replace us. Mm-hmm. And that's the danger that I feel like we're going into <clears throat> of like what's real and what's not. And yeah. it's and it's very, it's frightening a little bit, to be honest. And, you know, it makes it seem like you know, as artists, like, we just want to get paid to do what we love to do. Mm -hmm. We just want to give our art to the people. I mean, I think this pandemic showed us, if not more, that entertainment is so valued. Mm -hmm. Because while you was quarantined at home for six months, what were you doing? Watching TV, watching movies, listening to music. We're just as important as any other field or industry. And so, yeah. And, And that is crazy, like, AI and technology and robots and things like that are coming in and on one hand I can see how the goal is to make like things a lot easier for people Mm -hmm. um but like say when you walk in the grocery store if you walked in the grocery store 20 years ago all the lanes are open little Miss Irma is over here the dude is over here checking out Mm -hmm. like you were able to have those one-on-one conversations Mm -hmm. now you go to Walmart Kroger or wherever and there are two lanes open and then there are 57 self checkouts. That's crazy, isn't it? Because, first of all, now you take the jobs away. I was about to say, if I wanted to be hired as as a cashier, I would have applied. I didn't come to this store, so I'm I'm not gonna lie. Every time I go, I'm going to the line with the person because I want to mm-hmm. talk. I want to have that conversation. And that's um, even if you do that, because now we have Instacart, we have Grubhub. We have DoorDash. I mean, people don't even want to go to the movie theaters anymore because now you can stream it. Yeah. This is part of the problem with the strike, too, is like finding ways to see about the numbers and the residuals and all that because of streaming. Mm-hmm. As as cool and advanced all this streaming is going, you know, where we didn't have to buy DVDs or mm-hmm. go to the Blockbuster back yeah. in the day. Yeah. It's, it's going to be very interesting to see where the next 10 years go in television and film because... It's. I feel like we're taking the human experience away the more and more that this yeah. happens. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm still a person that likes to go to the movies. I'm still a person that, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it is cool to have it at the comfort of your home and just be able to. But there was an excitement when you knew Girlfriends or Martin was coming on and mm-hmm. you had to wait a week for the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Now... That's the thing about now. It's a popcorn generation. It's an instant gratification yes. generation. We want everything now, right away. Yeah. And it's like, you know, now, where are things going to go? What was the last movie you went to? You went to the movies to see. Oh, my gosh. What was the last one I saw? That's, see, and that's telling, that, that's horrible for me. I got to think about it. What did I go see? Yeah. I think I went to see American Friction. With was it Jeffrey Wright, Erica Alexander? Yes, um, that was really good. So I think I that was what three, mo- maybe three, four months ago. American Fiction. Yeah, that was really good. Man, what was the last movie I saw? I mean, The Color Purple keeps ringing in my head, but I know I seen some movies after that. I don't know. But you know we get old, so my brain be like, you know, just a little seasoned. You know, we yeah, got, yeah, we yeah, got yeah, other yeah. things yeah. on our mind. Listen, millennials, we aging great mm-hmm. over here. Okay, I mean, old, old is not it. old anymore. It's not at all. Like 
my grandmother is 85. Mm -hmm. Like, at one point in life, that wasn't considered old. That was considered dead. Because most people were dying in their 60s. Like, I, was telling, I went to see Diana Ross a week ago. And at the age of 80, this woman, first of all, still looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know, her, is another I don't know what her regimen <laughs> is. But, like, she's amazing. And she's still out here doing it. But 40 years ago, 60-year-olds would look like they're 109. Well, you know, black don't crack too. You know. But it swells. <laughs> Most of us, you know, have got a little... That is swells, it, it, unless you do crack. Yeah, you know what? But crack is whack. Yes. We miss you with Crack me. is cheap. <laughs> you know what? Oh, we love Nip. If there was any artist, actor. Um, okay, we're going to go with actors first. Okay, okay. That who are no longer with us, who you could bring back and work with, who would that be? And oh while you're thinking God. about that, when it comes to the music, if there's any musician, two of them, that you could bring back, get a new album from, get a tour from, even perform on stage with, okay? And mm. and, and to make it a little more challenging, oh, Whitney, it sounds like it's already challenging. Michael, Prince, we're taking them out. Because okay. those are the go-tos. Like, everybody of loves them. Of course, of course. And we all want them back. But who are, like, those artists that you may listen to that people don't know about that you would be like, damn, I, I would love to? Well, I always have my number one musician, and that's Aaliyah. Because I, okay. lo I loved Aaliyah so much. And, okay. I, and I felt like she was taken way too soon. And I would have loved to have seen what she would have done now, 20-something yeah. um, years later. Jesus, um, it's been that long. <laughs> I know, it's been that long. Ugh. Um, yeah. So, Aaliyah. Um, you said I have two musicians, or one musician, one actor, or you know uh, what? However many. However, you want. however many I want. Um, oh, who is an actor that I would have wanted to work with that passed away? Oh man. Um, well, one off the top of my, my, my head is Betty White. I would have loved oh, to yeah. work with Betty. I think Betty was so funny, and I would yeah. have loved to have worked with Betty White. Um, so I'm assuming you're a Golden Girls fan? I do like the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. I do, I do, I do. And then I love some of the movies that she's done over the years. Bringing Down the House. Uh, Bringing Down the House, The Proposal. <laughs> you know, if you oh, know, you know. The Proposal, I feel like I've only seen clips oh, of Oh, you have to see it with Sandra that. Bullock and um, Ryan Reynolds. And she plays, uh, I think, the the the, the grandma. Okay. Yeah. I, that's I a funny like, one. That's a good one. That might be on streaming, so I might have to check that, that out. Might be on streaming. Um, oof. I'm trying to think who else. Um, oh, I would have, whether I worked with him or not, I would have loved to have seen Chadwick Boseman yes. and more stuff. I would have loved to because I just thought he was such a great talent. Um, but he accomplished so much. Absolutely. And, I, what, and these legends that I've years? all named have done so much, whether they're, it was Aaliyah passing at 22 yeah. and still being mentioned to this day. That's something to be talked about. Um, and we were talking about Left Eye earlier. Yeah. I mean, that would have been amazing to see what she would have done. Um, mm, who else? Um, well, who is someone that I would have wanted to have worked with? And I'm just switching gears a little mm -hmm. bit. Probably would have been John Singleton. Because he's yeah. done so many classic movies. That I would have loved to have been able to be in one of those. And like, as I'm sitting here hearing you name these, even just these few names, mm -hmm. like their impact, the things that they've done, mm -hmm. their cultural relevance to this day, to this you know, day. Is, is ringing in my ear. And it's like, damn, these people are yeah. really no longer with us. That's why tomorrow's not promised. And you never know when your expiration date is going to be. And what you left, you know, as Beyonce said, I was here, you know, mm. you know, what that did you leave? Or, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, like, what mark did you leave? And like, I want to be able to, that's why you have to live your, like, every day, like it's your last and just go for your dreams no matter what, because we only have one life to live. And what are you going to accomplish before Sky Daddy calls you home? 
Come on, Sky Daddy. Sky Daddy. Right. That's a new one. I like that. I got that off social media. I heard somebody talking about it. I said, oh, that's, right. a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for you, mm-hmm. what can we look forward to from you? What are some of the things um, that as of right now, today, or yesterday that mm-hmm. you are making it your goal to accomplish? Aside from this amazing season five, yes. which we're, which, which is coming it. soon, yes. um, what, what are some things that we can hopefully get from you so. yes i mean in the next few years i want to book more tv shows i i want to be in more movies mm-hmm. um, um a lead in a feature film you what know. is your dream role oh my gosh people ask me that all the time and for me it's it's a couple things i think i would love to play someone in a biopic mm. um people have said tiger woods We'll see. Who knows? I don't okay, know. I can see um, that. I think. Also, I would just love to do something where I can encompass, like where I can encompass all genres in one, like a big box office hit movie where I can do action, a little bit of thriller in there, show my dramatic chops, but also show some comedy. Just something where I can show everything. But to that point, I want to be able to be like the Black Meryl Streep. And, and be in every single genre and do it fantastically and just represent for the black and queer community and show that we can do all types of roles. Someone who really inspires me right now is Coleman Domingo. I love what that he's doing. That got Mr. Just because, in case you guys saw Color Purple. Because he's not letting his sexuality define the roles that he's playing mm-hmm. and he's doing it flawlessly and still looking good on the red carpet, might I add. And Shout so out to that's, him that's, and his stylist. Yes, yes he so is. that that that's that's gonna be me because I feel like Coleman. He's a little bit of of a different age, and I feel like still right now we don't have in our age group that for me personally is doing that, mm-hmm. and I want to be able to to be that example for younger people that maybe when I was young I didn't really have that many people mm-hmm. to look up to. So yeah, I mean, obviously I would love to be you know an egot one day yes you know so be in a broadway show be on a huge movie work with the best actors in the business from denzel to viola to angela to tom hanks to jim carrey just the list goes on and on wow you know what and 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 when you do we're gonna bring you back we're gonna have more conversation about this next chapter these yes, next chapters, because this, 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 this is the beginning of the yeah, story. Th- this might just be season one, okay? Right. So we'll talk to you at season five of your life. There you go. Okay? But in the meantime, like, I definitely wish you longevity. I wish... I, I definitely want to see you in a comedy because I love laughing. Oh, my God. Me, I, too. I want to cry. Listen, Abbott Elementary, call me because I love that show. That show is good. I love... See, and that's the thing. I want to be able to be on Power, but also be on Abbott. Mm, you know, I okay. would love to tackle the comedy realm, you know, do like a Will and Grace again or yeah. like a Girlfriends or like, you know, something like that. But then do some heavy, heavy shit because I just <laughs> love that. Like anything that makes me feel, I love it. Okay. Uh, I, I can see that. So look, casting directors. Okay. If you guys are listening. You can give him a call, reach out, or whatever. You know, as a matter of fact, how can people get in touch with you? Because we know social media is big. So. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, my full first and last name, at Arrington Foster. You can follow me on Instagram. And the, the kids call it X now. I still say Twitter. But, right. You, know, you can follow me on those platforms. And, yeah, just be on the lookout for new stuff coming out. And July 5th. Season five of Family Business. Is it coming to Netflix us. first? Like, can it come to Netflix too? You know, I wish for Netflix. I don't. I don't know if they. You know, they, that's that's above my pay grade. So, unf- it's coming to BT Plus. Okay, so Hopefully, I have to get the app. You, you have to. Let get me borrow app. your password. Real quick. Ah! <laughs> no. Don't do that, y'all. Let's support black. It's only businesses. Ten dollars. Right, 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 right. You spend more than but, that on a sandwich you know, at McDonald's. Listen, hopefully, you know, I can't quote that, but who knows? Maybe Netflix will pick up further seasons that come out soon as well. So Absolutely. Yeah, if you're not caught up, what are you doing with your life? Catch up right now or watch it again and get yourself reacquainted for season five. Season one through five, amazing episodes, amazing cast, amazing everything that's a part of that show. Um, Soon, hopefully, he'll be announcing something regarding the um, a screening 
So yes. if you're in Atlanta, you know, there might be a lucky guest who may get invited to the screening. So make sure you guys are following him on social media, okay? At Arrington Foster. Spell it for us. A R R I N G T O N F O S T E R. There you go. Make sure you guys follow him on social media. Support him in all of his artistic endeavors. Um, and when he decides to come out with some music, make sure you download it. Do you, do you oh, download you, you, music? you already manifested my music career? I mean, why not? Why not? <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, if I gotta get an E, I gotta, get a, I gotta win a Grammy. You so. gotta sing. Exactly. Who knows? So unless, who knows? Unless, no. like Michelle Obama, you're like reading a book. Like Viola did it. She okay. She yeah, got an audio book too, sing. and so did Michelle. So, there you and go. And so did Barack. So, so you, you write know, a book listen. and you talk, and you might get a Grammy. I'll do voiceover. I'll do audio. I'll do it all. Well, there you go. So make sure you guys um, support, 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 and thank you guys for continuing to support BLK Talk. Um, and we'll be back with another amazing episode very soon. <laughs>